Hello, this is Red and April, and welcome to our off-grid home build. In this video, we'll finish up the framing, rough in the doors and windows, and put on the top rail. At the end, we'll provide a sneak peek of the first metal beam going up. In the last video, I showed that I put down the seal plate for the final wall, exterior wall of the house, which is on the east side. And so I'm putting that seal plate down first, bolting it down, and it's because this section of that wall is sloped upward. And I, I kind of mentioned the trouble I'd had getting all those measurements and markings right, but I finally got those markings in place, and I'm putting up the top rail here, you can see. And I have one board that was already cut to length that's kind of propping it up in the middle, and then I attach it on the ends. I actually attach a stud to the wall on each side, and then I'm attaching it to that stud on both sides, and then in the middle. And then my plan here was to go ahead and put a couple more boards kind of midway or kind of every quarter of the way through the wall here just to get the top beam straight. And then to verify that, I stretched a string across from one end to the other, put in a couple screws on either side, stretched a string across, and made sure that I was perfectly straight from top to bottom. I might also mention that I'm tapering the top rail on the south wall and on the north wall to fit the slope of the roof. So that actual board that's going across the top sill plate, I tapered with a handheld router in order to make it to where once I set that beam down, it makes contact along the full surface of the top rail and the bottom rail. And then I'm putting this top rail on this side sloping wall uh, to meet those slopes at either end so they kind of come flush. Once I had the top rail kind of straight and, and in place, I was able to go along with each board since I had the markings top and bottom and just hold it in place and then just mark with a pencil to get the exact height, which made it so much easier than trying to do the calculations for each one. So I just put it up, got it level, you know, lined up with the marks, marked it with a pencil and then took it over and cut it on my angle saw. And I'm actually using about a five degree pitch there. So I, I taper the top of the board when I cut it. To, at a five degree angle so it matches the bevel of the top rail that's sloping down and so then I just uh, put each one in and cut each one to length. I'm really enjoying the process of framing the house. Um, I enjoy working with wood. I like doing carpentry of all kinds and even making furniture and all that kind of stuff so I enjoy working with wood and so I've really enjoyed the process of framing the house. And so I'm, I'm actually really happy that we've switched over from aircrete to traditional lumber framing just because I enjoy the process so much. So all of this stuff, you know, cutting, cutting the lumber and piecing it all in, uh, I'm really, really enjoying doing this. The miter saw that you see me using here occasionally, and, and I'm using it to cut the angle correctly on the top of these studs, is an old DeWalt uh, miter saw that I've had you know, since I was a young man. I probably had it 25 years, and it was old when I bought it. I bought it used from a guy who'd used it for a long time. And uh, it, it's back when DeWalt was a different color, so it's like you know, the Makita color. And anyway, I just love this old miter saw. It's not a compound miter saw. It's just a, a simple single miter saw. But anyway, it works great. I can't seem to wear it out. Um, it even has a brake on it that still works. Anyway, just a fun aside, it, it's a tool that I, I love and I've had forever. Once I'd finished piecing in the studs, I went ahead and put the top rail on this side section and then started framing, rough framing in the windows. I started the rest of the rough end work for the windows and doors on the wall I just finished. That's the master bedroom and master bath side. And so here I am putting in the window for the master bathroom. There's actually three windows on this side, two in the bedroom, one in the bathroom. And so that's the side that the sun comes up on. So we'll get nice morning sun that'll come into our bedroom and light up the master bathroom really well. I then moved on to the south wall of the house, which is the wall that has the most windows and some pretty big windows. And so I started on the small windows. There's a couple windows that are 36 inches wide and one that's, I believe, 24 inches wide. And so for these, I just used a 2x4 header, which I make by just standing two 2x4s up on end and putting plywood in between those. So I quickly made those headers. Um, put those in place and then could just kind of filled in the framing around them, kind of got the bottom sill and then filled in the kind of the missing studs uh, where they should go on 16 inch centers.
And of course I'm only doing kind of a rough end framing here. I'll come back and actually line these with 2x6s later. Once I finished those up, I started to work on the beams for the two four foot wide windows and of course the six foot wide doors. So for this bigger span, I wanted to do a more of a heavy duty header, bear, you know, the greater weight that they might be subjected to. And so for the four foot wide windows, I decided to go with a six inch or six inch wood. So basically a two by six stood two of those stood up on end with plywood in the middle or OSB actually in the middle. And then for the, the big span across the door, which is six feet, I went ahead and did a two by eight. So even thicker there. I hadn't bought any lumber for these headers specifically. And so I was able to kind of look around and find some old forms uh, that I, would, I was able to repurpose for this. So these are forms that we use for the foundation of this house. And I found enough good straight or good decently straight pieces uh, that weren't too damaged from water or anything. Uh, that they were still actually very sound and in good shape that I was able to repurpose and reuse for these headers. So I was actually excited to do that. I, I like the idea of having wood that I used in the forms for the foundation permanently in the structure of the house. So Anyway, I found some good boards. Uh, they did need a little bit of work, and so I needed to use my hand planer to straighten those out, take out a little bit of cupping and a little bit of twisting. and But they weren't too bad, so it didn't take too much to get them good and straight, and then I was able to make my headers out of them. These headers are pretty big, they're pretty substantial, they got a lot of weight to them, so they're a bit hard to manage. And so in order to minimize having to deal with them, I, what I do is I put a, get a small piece of two by four, just scrap piece, and I screw that onto either side with the top of the scrap piece in, in the location of the height that I want the header to be. So I put one of those on either side, just with one or two screws, just kind of tack it in place. And so then when I lift the header up, I can just rest it on those two boards that I've tacked in place. And then I'll just check my level, make sure I'm good. If I need to adjust it, make a little adjustment. And then put some screws in the side to hold the header in place. Of course, I'll come back later with uh, two by sixes that will go from the edge of the, of the header all the way down to the floor and support it in that way. But for now, I just need to hold it in place and I do that with screws. And actually for the windows, it worked out really good. So all the windows on this side of the house are at the same height. Instead of using, you know, little scrap pieces of wood that I screwed into place, I just cut two boards full length from the seal plate at the bottom all the way up to the height of the header. And I just reused those two boards that I cut to length and temporarily screwed them into that side stud. And that got me the right height every time without measuring. And that worked out really good. I might mention here too that the reason I'm not putting in those 2x6 boards to kind of finish out the rough opening until later is because it'll be easier if I leave them off for now, put all the sheeting on, and then cut out with a router around the holes for the doors and windows through the sheeting. And then I put on the 2x6s after that because the 2x6s will actually stick out past the sheeting and stick out far enough to also cover the insulation board that's going on the outside. So that's why I'm waiting till later to do that. So to kind of explain that a little better, so the next layer that I put on will be the 7 16th OSB sheeting, and I'll put that all along the outside, and I'll just cover the doors and windows up with that. Then I'll come back in with the router, cut those holes out, and then on top of that sheeting, we'll go on our, our one and a half inch foam board. Then that two by six that I put in will come out far enough to cover the sheeting and the foam board. So it'll be flush with the edge of the foam board. After we get the foam board on, we'll put on a layer of house wrap that'll come into the windows and kind of button everything up and seal everything up. And then on top of that will be furring strips, kind of like purlins that we'll attach the exterior sheeting to, which will probably be metal at this As I'm working on finishing up the rough end for the windows on this side, April is removing the plastic and insulation that we had covering the last concrete pour. It's nice to get that removed and see how that looked, and it turned out great. So we're excited to have the last concrete pour done and be through with the concrete portion of the floor. After I finished the roofing in the windows, kind of the next thing was to put on the top rail along the north and south walls. And so the first thing I had to do on the north or the south wall that I just finished the tall wall 
was to get it totally flat. And so there were a few places where it bowed a little bit. Remember I was trying to kind of adjust for the uh, the footer, which wasn't perfectly level. And so I tried to adjust as I went along, but it wasn't true. And so I, I had to get up with my hand planer and plane off that top sill plate a little bit just to get it as good as I could get it, as straight as I could possibly get it. So there's a few high spots and I took off maybe a quarter inch in a couple places to get it a little more true along the top. So this top rail I'm putting on is basically just another layer of 2x4 directly on top of the top plate. And so it just gives you a double layer of 2x4 you know, along the top of your framing wall. And when you do that, you try to make sure that the seams don't fall over the seams of the previous layer. That you put the, make sure that the seams between two boards kind of fall in between the two previous boards so that they're offset. And therefore it gives the, the whole structure more strength and keeps it from wanting to bow in or out. The last wall that needed the top rail was the northern side of the house, which is kind of the low end of the house. And it was originally pretty uh, not straight as well, but I'd, I'd already went back in earlier, kind of right after I built the wall, and leveled the top, and I'd put in some spacers, so I'd already done everything I could to make it level and true. So the top rail went on pretty quick. It was just a matter of kind of cutting my boards and getting the seams to offset correctly and getting it nailed into place. It went pretty quickly. That kind of wraps up our framing for now. We're, we're done with the exterior walls, and the next step is to move on to the putting on the rafters, which is really exciting. We'll be building our own metal beams ourselves and putting them on. So it's a, a change of pace here, and we're excited to get moving on to that. The rafters are looking amazing. Excited to show you all more about that in the next video. Here's our view from the other direction. Here's the RV parked under the shade and shelter. We have our solar panels mounted really enjoying living out here so off into the thick grass everything really grew up after the monsoon this year we had a really good monsoon season and i saw the plastic land somewhere out here there shouldn't be too many snakes should be too cold for them so this looks like a pretty active location all kinds of holes look back at the house from here Getting pretty far out, but still haven't found any sign of the plastic. Okay, I think I caught a glimpse of... So there it is. Over here and pick it up. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunset. So the only snakes we have seen so far is a red racer. And then we have actually seen a green Mojave. Rattler, so they're about 10 times more poisonous than a traditional rattlesnake. So definitely not something you want to mess with. Our daughter and son-in-law have seen two baby rattlesnakes right by their front and back door, so definitely got to watch out for the snakes out here. And there it is. So we just had this piece of plastic kind of wedged between some boards and it was a pretty still day, but the wind decided to pick it up and fling it around in the air for several minutes. And then it dropped it down here. So here's where it is. Here to the house site. Thank you all so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe.